Hi, I'm Ben Dickman, Product Development Manager for Chauvet Professional, and on today's Tech Talk, we're going to look at Redshift. Redshift is a phenomena that we have seen since the advent of lighting. What it is is essentially the heating up of the tungsten coil of a lamp that changes the color temperature from when it first turns on to when it's at its full intensity. Of course, the inverse also applies that when you dim it down, it again shifts color back. Typically, the lower level of a tungsten light, the warmer or the redder the color is. Once it gets up to full, the whiter it is. That's why we call it red shift, because it shifts to or from red. The advent of LEDs pretty much eliminated this, because for years, everybody looked at redshift as a hindrance. It was one of those things that you just had to deal with with lighting sources. And when we came up with LEDs, LEDs as a solid state instrument blinks on and off really, 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 really fast. That really, really, really fastness allows your eye to think that a fixture is dimming even though it actually isn't. Because of this, the LED doesn't actually change color temperature. This was great because now you could just set a light at whatever intensity you wanted and it would just stay there color-wise. It would never change. If you ran it at 5%, it was still the same color temperature. If you ran it at 100%, same color temperature. Everybody applauded this as great. This is what we wanted. This is saving us. And then everybody got nostalgic. Here's where the problem laid in. Because now, what we had been able to get rid of with LEDs, everybody wanted back. So that gave us the challenge of how do we create Redshift? So what does Redshift actually look like? Let's take a look at that on a tungsten sourced fixture first. We've got an old school ellipsoidal here that has a tungsten lamp in it. As we look at it, it starts out really kind of reddish orange, dims up into its 3200. Going back down, same thing, goes back to that reddish orange. That is the redshift. Now, in an LED fixture, without redshift in it, let's take a look at that on our E930 here. This fixture can do redshift now, and it also can go without. So let's take a look at it without first. So now as we look at the fixture dimming, you'll see that the color temperature pretty much stays the same. Any shift in color temperature that you might see can pretty much be attributed to aberration from the optics. It's not actually changing color temperature at the LED source itself. So that's what LED did for us. So now when people asked us, well, can we get some redshift back in? Because we really love that warm tungsten glow. We went to work and we thought, okay, how can we do this? Well, the easiest way to do this is when you're using a single color white source, something like our P38, our Strike P38 here. When that uses a single white source, you have your white. That's great. Up, down, same color temperature, no problem. Because this is a very washy fixture, we had the ability to add some very specific color-tuned amber LEDs around the outside of that white LED, and we can then mimic that redshift. It's not a true redshift because we're actually adding some amberish color back in as the white's coming down and they're kind of playing together in this algorithm so that it works perfectly and looks like a tungsten source, like, like those old um, DWE blinders did. And that, of course, is switchable. So you can go on, you can go off, you can go either way. Uh, it's whatever situation calls for in your design. This was a fairly easy concept. And we were able to do it and we put it into a bunch of our, our blinders and it's been very, very popular. So that covered the blinders and the, the very, very washy fixtures. This was something we did several years ago. Works great. The next challenge has been in other fixtures, such as ellipsoidals and moving heads. This becomes a much, 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 much more complicated effect to create. When you're dealing with something that does a hard edge, you can't just run a ring of LEDs around a central LED because they'll image themselves. They'll see, you'll see it. You'll see a red ring around your white source, and that's not good. What we can do is we can take our multi-source fixtures like the E930 here, or a single source fixture with CMY mixing like the Maverick Silence 2 here, and we can mix those colors using very, very complex algorithms in order to create the same redshift. Now, this is an extraordinarily complex thing to do. It sounds easy because every programmer can program a dim. So say you're, you put your fixture at 3200 Kelvin and you want it to dim down to 2500 Kelvin. Every lighting designer out there can program a dimmer fade to go down and shift as it dims down. Unfortunately, redshift doesn't work that way. Redshift follows what's called the black body curve. So it's a curve. You're not going point to point, you're curving. And then on top of that, when you're dealing with a multi-source fixture like this that can do multiple color temperatures, 
you're curving from here, or you're curving from here, or you're curving from here, all trying to get to the same place. So your algorithm becomes extraordinarily complex and very, very hard to match. But we think we did a pretty good job. So if we take a look at the E930 now, I'll have, uh, the, I'll have the programmer here put on a redshift so we can actually see how the redshift works using this six color system in our Ovation E930 VW. So there you go. You can see right at that bottom end there, you get a shift towards that ambery warm glow, what everybody wants. Is it gonna be perfect and match a tungsten fixture exactly? No, it won't. Nothing ever will because until we get infinite numbers of LED emitters to work with and infinite colors, you can't necessarily exactly match the same spectrum that's coming out. It's just a matter of physics. We can get really close, and we did. So let's take a look at them together. So here, they come up together. I have them staggered so that they go up and down so that your eye can kind of adjust to see and compare as they go down. You get a little bit of, you get that same warm glow, you get that same white when it comes back up. So that's a feature you're gonna see in all of our ovations moving forward. Um, the full color fixtures and the variable white fixtures will all have redshift included. It's a feature you can turn on and off via DMX channel or in a menu map. So if you wanna just set it and leave it at redshifting always, it's gonna be there. If you wanna turn it on and off based on your cue, you can do that too. It's gonna to be the perfect happy medium between having it and not having it. Now, moving heads create a whole new set of issues. Moving heads usually run off of a white source. And as I said, you can't just run a ring of amber LEDs around a white source. So if you have a fixture like the Maverick Silence 2 profile here, you can bring up that white and have it, and then you've got CMY and CTO and a couple other tricks up its sleeve that we can use to create that same redshift. And this actually creates a really, really nice redshift because we use that variable CTO flag. Now, not only do we use that CTO flag, but depending on the where in the spectrum the color is, the fixture knows. The fixture will adjust how it does that color shift based on what it's doing. So if you're using the CTO flag, it's gonna then take the uh, magenta and yellow flags and use those to create the redshift. Say you've created a really funky color using the magenta and yellow flags and the CTO flag. It's gonna take the little RGB LED that we have, the 60 watt RGB LED that we have inside there, and it's gonna use that to create the redshift. The fixture knows based on the status it's in what it needs to do in order to redshift. This is an extraordinarily difficult thing to accomplish and took our engineers a ton of work to do. And the end result we feel is pretty phenomenal. Uh, the combination of the extremely high resolution dimming along with, these red, with the redshift through the different filters and options creates a very, very, very realistic redshift, you can see. So this has been a brief overview of what redshift is, how it works, and how we address it in different fixture types. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something here and you can use that in your design for your next show. This has been Tech Talk. For more information on any of these fixtures that you saw here today, please go to www.chauvetprofessional.com.